it's not a part of being a, of doing a better job than the FMC. It's yeah. just maybe to be right and yes. to put the right data into the yeah. FMC. Yeah. Those 300 feet can save your day or not. Yeah. The LS is a fixed geometric path. So the, basically the, the glide slope of the LS doesn't care about the temperature, doesn't care about the wind, doesn't care about anything. This slide is basically for all the people that, the experienced people, they know what we are talking about, but the new cadets as well, they, they, they can see many points, many things. Imagine that you were saying, Gabriel, at the beginning of the aviation that they have to do everything, everything with calculation. So that was a really hard workload for everybody, you know? So, and now basically what the Elnath and DNAF does is just basically reduce the workload for us. So, but this is like, a, as you can see, an approach plate uh, for one airport. And uh, basically with all the constraints that we have to follow all the data and it's just everything is important, you know, everything you have to keep in mind. But the good tool is that we have DNAF and Elnath that they are taking all this information yeah. for us in the SMS. So um, the BNAF benefits. Of course, we were talking about the reduced workload and um, a stabilized BNAF final approach path and, and haze uh, safety as compared to the dive and drive method that we were discussing at the beginning yeah. uh, today. The image below is just an example of uh, both methods. Uh, and as you can see, the dive um, and drive method is the, um, is the black line that we have here. And um, and uh, basically, it burns more fuel and it's not as efficient in terms of um, terrain either. I mean, it's not, it's not safe in terms of terrain because you're flying close to, to the terrain. On the other side, you have the BNAF profile that is going to create, as we were discussed before, a line following a three degree glide path. And uh, it's going to go all the way to the runway threshold. Creating that path is going to save fuel and it's going to be safer as well in terms of terrain. Yes, exactly. And less and less work, uh, workload, of course. Yeah, yeah. And there is one big safety issue also. Uh, on the last part on the dive and drive, the black line, you know, usually people that were arriving on the last part on the MDA in case of an yeah. precision approach with the gear down, flat full and everything, flying uh, uh, level off with flat full and gear down. And that's not ideal because if you have an engine failure in that, in that critical situation, you're fine leveling off with an engine failure with gear down flat full. It's, uh, it can be demanding also to the aircraft to stay, I mean, to keep flying. Yeah, you really need to be very precise as a pilot. But instead, on the constant descent, you're going to fly gear down flat full. If you have an engine failure, you have more energy available because you are descending. So it's not as critical as flying level off with everything because you have a lot of uh, power if you are flying level off with gear down flat full. And if you have an engine failure, you're going to have a big yo moment due to the operative engine having a lot of trust in. Okay, so um, let's talk about the threats of the BNAF approaches, which is something uh, really important, as we were saying about the Q&A, the blunder error. Uh, it comes from different sources, uh, the ATIS, the ATC, and the flight plan, the weather, also applies to approaches uh, using vertical speed. Yeah. Then the equipment failure or downgrade can affect our BNAF approaches. That's another threat. As we were saying before, the temperature corrections, the pressure altimeter calibrated to standard conditions. Any deviation from uh, the standard will result in error proportional to the ISO deviation and to the height of the aircraft about the aerodrome pressure datum. An approximate correction is 4% height increased for every 10 degrees below standard temperature as measured at the altimeter setting source. Yes. The um, another threat is the FMC coding error. We were discussing that before as well. Check the FMC navigation data, basis uh, current, and verify the altitude, the track and distance, always with the approach chart. Yes. And obviously the limitations of the aircraft as well, they could affect us. Yeah, I remember, I remember many times during summer when we were doing these uh, VINAV approaches, uh, that uh, if we don't apply the altitude correction on summer, we will always end up having three, three whites and one red on final. I don't know if it happens to you. To me, it happens many, many times. Doing the VNAV in summertime because we are flying an higher yeah. uh, uh, real altitude, we will end up every time three whites and one red. So this yeah, is, yeah. That, that uh, happens to me as well many times. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, if you don't, if you don't update, all the time the system, uh, it can lead you into this situation, yeah. Yeah, of course. Very good, very good. Yeah. 
Well, with the, what is important about PNAF, it's uh, always uh, many things important, but we're going to review a little bit more. But uh, remember that PNAF is parametric input, as we were saying before, the altimeter for the path, while the ILS is, is a fixed geometric path, glide the slope. So as you were saying before, Gabriel, you can actually fly a wrong path because you didn't introduce the, the right uh, Q&H. And uh, that's really important, especially when you're flying in clouds, because if you are not in contact with the terrain and you think everything actually is uh, leading you into think that uh, you you're doing the right thing you do you do you're doing the right path but basically you're flying lower or higher but if you fly higher that's not a problem you're going to become unstabilized at the end of the approach yeah. but uh, i mean it's not going to be sa uh, safety compromise you know yeah but um but uh this is really important always to check cross check the barometric input uh, the altimeter the q and h that you have what do you have in the uh, bnf fmc and, um, and this is one of the points uh, I, will, I will say the most important, actually, especially when you're flying clouds, you know. Very good. Uh, when the aircraft passes the misapproach waypoint, uh, BNAF will disconnect. And overspeed disconnect message will appear in the CDU scratch file. So the caution, uh, it's the BNAF, the BNAF pass. Another throttle in our FMC will give us a thrust required message. If the speed goes more than five knots below up speed. However, the out of, uh, out of throttle does not add thrust until 15 knots below up speed. That's for the 737. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, it's basically the opposite of uh, the drag required we're discussing because in, in yeah. those you need some thrust, so it's going to uh, ask you, yeah, that's uh, to add some thrust, yeah. And and I will mention as well here as well, it's something important that sometimes we think we, we are cleverer than the SMT or the uh, the system. And then we try to use vertical speed or level change in a 737 with the intention of doing a better job uh, than the FMC. But basically, maybe it's doing a wrong uh, job, the FMC, because you, you put the wrong yeah, data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're basically so trying basically, to correct yourself, yeah. <laughs> and I always try to be, uh, as we were saying before, it doesn't matter if you have 20,000 hours or 500 hours. Try to be humble with a nice and friendly approach to the other guy, to the other pilot, even your captain, first officer, whatever, a new guy coming into that plane. Uh, just be humble, try to check, cross-check all this data and try to work as a team. Because uh, it's not a part of being, a, of doing a better job than the FMC. Yeah. It's just maybe to be right. Yes. with the right data in the yeah FMC. yeah 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 okay. exactly it's another great point i always say it is not important uh who is right it's important what is right so that should be the main focus uh, be humble and yeah definitely i will add something also uh, on the first point where uh, basically the difference between having a vnav uh, and ils that one is actually a barometric uh, is you know that I mean the the ILS is a fixed geometric path. So the basically the the glide slope on the ILS doesn't care about the temperature, doesn't care about the wind, doesn't care about anything. If you know you're on the three degrees ILS, but you need to be on the three degrees, you know that that's the correct one. And that's exactly. big difference. It's like yeah. a fixed uh, path. Yeah. It's a fixed path. It's yeah. not going to change. It's going to yeah. give you exactly the same always. But but the BNAP use barometric uh, barometric input that gives you different paths. You can, yeah. so it's not a fix. Uh, it's yeah. not a fix path. That, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Sometimes so you are perfectly on the VNAV path, but you are a bit high on the ELS, on the glide slope, or vice versa. You are perfect on the VNAV path, but you are below the glide slope. So, but then once you see the glide slope, it's important to follow the glide slope in case of a precision approach. Yes, good. Well, and um, I will just summarize. I will, uh, we will talk, we're going to talk about the, the most important things. Uh, of the BNAP basics. It gives you a more stabilized path, similar to the ILS, but with those things that they're going to change specifically, the um, temperature and the QNH blunder error that we discussed. So we need to, it's going to help us a lot, especially uh, from the top of the stent all the way down. But when, once we approach to the, once we reach the approach and the, um, and we have to follow a uh, special procedure, from the waypoint till the runway end, 
then you have to be more careful, especially as we discussed, temperature, QNH, winds, and everything is gonna it's gonna change a little bit more, and it's it's more accurate at that uh, final stage of the uh, flight, and it's gonna change a lot more your speed and your altitude, safe altitude, you know, because you have to be following a path, but if it's a wrong number, then you're gonna be below that path. Yeah. And that's those 300 feet can save your day or not. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, sometimes, yes. And uh, what <laughs> I do al always, uh, for example, I let the enough to calculate the top of the sand and so on, but I make gross calculations also by myself to see if the top of the sand that Vinav calculates is correct. Then we start the sand because I, I'm quite sure that the top of the sand is pretty much correct. But the, the closer we get to the runway, the more calculations I do by myself to cross check that the VNAV is actually doing a good job. So normally, usually below 15,000, 20,000 feet, I start to do more calculation, more and more as we get closer to make sure that the VNAV is not uh, uh, doing something wrong. Because again, as you say, we need to be humble and cross check all the time because at the end, this is all computer stuff. But the aircraft is a real stuff and we need to make sure that the aircraft is uh, on profile regardless of what VNAV is saying. If we do the cross check and we see that the VNAV uh, is uh, is correct. We just leave it in Vinav. If you do the cross check and we see that there is something uh, wrong, that our calculation is completely different to the Vinav, let's do the, again the cross check. If it's still the same result, then we should start to uh, uh, see where is the could be the problem. Exactly. And then uh, the code glide path angle is uh, in the final approach segment clears all obstacles subject to temperature correction. It helps uh, as well less potential for crew errors. The BINA basics, uh, what we're talking about, less potential for control flight into terrain, approach and landing accidents, lower workload for the pilots, and the BINA path is compute based on, upon airplane performance characteristics and speed or altitude constraints along the, the lateral navigation uh, path. As a last point, I would say the descent path can be either performance or geometric that we were discussing before. And the ge geometric path is typically shallower descent and a non-idle path between two points, as we were discussed, and the BINA will manage energy to comply with the speed restriction, with the speed very good. Uh, restrictions. So good, understand good. that. Yeah, very, very good. So good. So I guess, uh, Cesar, the most important thing here is that, uh, for ex especially for a new pilot, is VINA really helps you a, a lot. Uh, uh, one of my suggestions is uh, when flying using VINA is uh, make sure you understand VINA. Because as we saw, there are a lot of components such as the tailwind, the headwind, the engine anti-ice, temperature, attitude constraints, different types of VNAV also that we didn't discuss because it's very type specific, such as VNAV speed, VNAV path. And as a new pilot, I think it's very important to understand uh, what uh, VNAV is doing. Uh, I have to say that now that I fly also the Airbus 320 and I'm from the Boeing 737, the VNAV of the Boeing 737 is much better than the 320, much better. There is no comparison. Well, uh, Gabriel, it's because you're flying Airbus now. Uh, as I always say, if it's not going, I'm not going. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's I've been a good this for many years, and uh, I don't know if I will change to Airbus, but uh, I mean, I really, I really like the seven three. Yeah, as I agree, I can, for, for sure, for sure. So, Cesar, do you have any uh, any advice for the new pilots uh, about this VNAV, how to use it, when, um, what they should take into consideration? Any advice for a new pilot that is uh, starting to fly on airliners? Well, the first advice I will say is just, uh, it's something more in the person, you know, talking about, um, you have to, you're a pilot. We, we are pilots. I mean, with 20, as I said, 20,000 down to zero hours. The most important thing, and I train many, many pilots in my career, is just to be, leave your ego behind. Try to be as humble as possible. Try to be friendly with your colleagues. It's an operation that it's like uh, taking into account uh, two persons working together. Maybe it's not going to be your best friend. Maybe you're going to be a good friends for, for your life. Uh, but the most important is that you do a safe operation all the way down uh, to, the, to the destination. So my the, the, what I will say the, 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 about BNAF, is of course, it's a system that is gonna help you to fly the plane. You have to introduce the data. You have to cross-check, as you were saying, <clears throat> all the, this data every now and then. 
because uh, even though we think that we are the best pilots, all of us, I think, uh, we make some mistakes. And that's why maybe we have another guy that even le less experienced, so speak up. The new guys, they need to speak up if they, in a nice way, to talk to your captain, uh, to, to your instructor, or, or to your cadet next when you become captain. Be humble in a nice way, the way you want they talk to you as well. Exactly, you know? yeah. Yeah, another yeah. turning point, yeah. And that, that would be my point. Very good, very I good. I will start with this because, of course, technically you can you can do many you can say many things, but I I think that if you have the attitude, then you can reach a good level. Because yeah. if you're studying, if you study and you prepare yourself, you're gonna be an excellent pilot. But I mean, obviously, you have to be humble and you have to be a friendly person. Yes, well. definitely, definitely. Amazing point. Out. Yeah, yeah, very amazing point. I do agree. I do agree. I have nothing to add about that. Very, very good. Okay. Thank, you, thank you very much for your time and uh, I hope we can do another one next time because it's been a very very good time for me to to, to work with you now here yeah same. likewise same okay here. thank you very much have a good day yeah, yeah. Ciao, 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 ciao.